I'm Larry Vickers, the host of TAC TV. I'm a trained firearms professional with years of experience in the industry. So unless you're properly trained, never attempt anything you see on this show, ever. Long range shooting is the firearms industry equivalent to the fishing story. Every time you talk to somebody, the distances got farther and the shot got more difficult. I got a little taste of that myself last year on the mile shot episode. We're gonna revisit that topic out here at Gunsight with my good buddy, Walt Wilkinson. He's one of the Gunsight staff instructors, retired Sergeant Major from US Army Special Forces, 30 years in service, and he's a world champion 50 caliber shooter. We're gonna visit some of the excellent long range facilities that Gunsight has to offer. I'll be shooting a very special 338 Lapua and Walt will be shooting his world champion 50 caliber BMG bolt gun. This is a real special episode and if you're into long distance shooting, make sure you stay tuned because we're gonna debunk a lot of myths along the way. That did it. <laughs> Okay, the gun I'm using this year out here at Gunsight in the Season 2 Long Distance episode is an Accuracy International AX338 Lapua, provided to me by my good friend Randy Pennington at Mile High Shooting Accessories in Denver, Colorado. Randy reached out after he saw what we did last year on the show, offered up a gun for Season 2, and turns out he's a Vietnam vet with a service-related disability. Really good guy and what I consider the best one-stop shop for high-end sniper rifles and accessories in the country. This entire gun was decked out by Mile High Shooting Accessories. Let me take you through it. They're the exclusive distributor for suppressed armament systems, which was the suppressor that came with the gun. It has a 20-inch barreled AX. It was the base rifle, the 338 Lapua. The Schmidt and Bender scope, which he supplies, I actually got this particular one in flat dark earth from Mark Cromwell at Schmidt and Bender USA. This is one of the exact scopes that they're sending to SOCOM for the PSR program. The 5 to 25 PM2 is the gold standard for long distance shooting now, and this is the scope that was actually chosen by the shooters in SOCOM before the rifle was chosen. That's how good of a piece of kit this is. The spur mount was supplied by Mile High. They're one of the spur distributors in the United States. Excellent mount, has a leveling bubble on the bottom, clamps on very solidly, unlike the gun we had last year. Good. Whoa, we're The mount's loose. The scope is loose again. Best mount I'm aware of on the market today, bar none. Also, Atlas Bipod has a throw lever mount and last but not least, folding stock, and it has the Blue Force gear sling on. Now it's a tactical sling, as you know. You can run the adjustment in and out as you need be, or you can actually cuff up, pinch down on your arm, and then use this as a support like a standard service rifle sling. That's one of the many factors why that sling was adopted by the Marine Corps as the recommended sling for the M16 and M4 family. Okay, TAC TV fans, I'm out here at Long Range Ridge with my good buddy, Walt Wilkinson, Sergeant Major, retire. We've known each other for a long time. Walt's a staff instructor here at Gunsight and one of the most dialed in gun guys that I know and a world champion 50 caliber thousand yard shooter. He's obviously the guy that I wanted to tap into for long range shooting. Now I brought out a 338 AI gun and you've got your Steyr here, correct? Yes, I do, my HS50. I guess we'll confirm zeros and then we'll get out here and start shooting some targets at distance. Walt, I know you've told me this before, but remind me, when did you get into long range shooting? Back in Ohio in high school. All right, you know the groundhog thing, all over the place. Uh, me and my friends got into long range groundhog shooting right there. We progressed through the 25-06 thing up into our first precision guns once I got in the service and was able to make a little bit of money with a Remington 40XB in seven millimeter Remington Magnum. I remember. You're an Ohio boy just like me. You bought that advanced shooting supplies in Columbus, correct? That's correct. Customer. Me and my buddy got consecutive serial numbers, single shot 40 XPs. 
Good deal. Now, we've talked about a variety of things off camera here. When it comes to long range shooting, everything kind of changes at a thousand, right? That is correct. Once you get to that range, the bullet is dropping like a rainbow. So small problems in your calculations equal a lot, right? So the environmental factors of temperature and barometric pressure really affect the bullet. And you've got to really either run the math or have your dope book set up so that you know what the bullet's gonna do at different temperatures. And then of course, the answer to the, the problem nowadays is the ballistic computer. Yeah, absolutely. Now, we know you're a world champion of 50 cal. What else do you shoot with? I, I compete with the 308 because I think that's the best round really to train with. I'm not using one of the super calibers there. Um, the long range matches, uh, I use the 338 Lapua, all right, going out to 2250 there. And then of course I shoot the, the practical 600 yard matches and the 1000 yard match with my uh, Star HS50. And one of the refreshing things about some of the stuff we talked about is you don't buy into the perpetuated myth of the sub MOA accuracy in terms of ammo shooter gun combination. That's one of the hard things that uh, a lot of the students that come out here, you know, they want every single group to be, you know, a half inch or so. And, and that's not going to be the case, all right? Uh, some people will claim that, you know, when they shoot that one time quarter inch group, that now their rifle is a quarter MOA rifle from then on. No, the stars just aligned and you got the bullets to, to go into the same area in a, in a tight group. A one MOA gun, that's what you're looking for. And we always have to explain that to the students at whatever range you're at. You know, at 300, dude, this is a perfect group, all right? And at 400, this is a perfect group. You're doing fine, all right? Don't get all frustrated. In most cases with the environment, environmental changes and the ammunition and the rifle put together, a one MOA group is really what, what you should expect. So if you're shooting 1500, it's a 15 inch group. 15 inch group is an excellent group at, at that range because the environment really starts to come into play there. Good deal. Well, I can tell you last season, we had a blast with our mile shot. By your standards, it was, you know, it was rather crude per se, but this season I want to tap into a real subject matter expert and look at some of the science and debunk some of the myths behind shooting at long range. You'll be firing up your 50, I'll fire up my 338. We'll have a great I think we will. Yep. We've, and we certainly have the facilities here to do that. You got that right. So why Daniel Defense? I'll take it. We're up here on Long Range Ridge at Gunsight. My buddy Walt Wilkinson is spotting for me and we're dialing in my AI AX338 with the Schmidt Benner 5 to 25 on top of it. Walt helped me get zeroed in at 100. Then we confirmed it at 300 on the Woodfill range. And now we're stretching it out to eight. 900, 1,000 different steel targets, and he's calculating the come ups. So, in theory, we can be on the first shot or the second shot at most. And by and large, it's been right on the money. Okay, I'm going to give you your wind holes in mils. Okay. All right, so figure out what they are. It looks like increments of 10 and then 5, but in the center crosshair, it's only out to 10 on each side, north, south, east, west. Okay, so yeah, I can swag five, two, mm -hmm. five, seven, that kind of thing. Yeah. When you're ready, let me know. It's the small square one, third one from the right. I'm ready. Okay, favor right. It looked like windage was good, just just underneath. Yep. Okay, dial up 0. 0.5. So now we've come up 0. 0.5, six, point two. That's what we should be up right now at 882. Let me know when you're ready, shooter. I'm ready. Favor right. All right.
Clang. Yep. Can't ask for more than that. No. I think it hit just off the cross, upper left-hand quadrant of it. Okay. All right, we're gonna move to the 1,082. Two targets left. The one with the crosshair on it? Correct. I am ready. Right edge. Off the edge. You hit below the center just a little bit, so it looks pretty good. Okay. Tell me when you're ready. Ready. Right edge. Clang. Trey says maybe just a little bit below center. Okay, moving. 1313. That's in the, that open field? Yeah, to the left. The two that are together, tall and short. I'm ready. Right edge. Oh! He almost got it. him, dude. There's a jackrabbit behind the target I was trying yeah, to get. Yeah, high left. Come down, point four. We should at least get in there. All right. Tell me when you're ready. I am ready. Right, point five. There we go. There we go. Okay, we know we can pound out to that. Now we're gonna stretch. All right. Right now, the 338's doing great. I'm using Black Hills 250 grain, mile high shooting and accessories hooked me up with the gun. We're at 1300 now. We're trying to push farther, and by all counts, with a 20 inch barrel, we're gonna start running into challenges, so we'll see how it shakes. Let's see what that little 20 inch barrel's capable of. All right. It's lightening up pretty good for us. We shouldn't have a problem. Mirage is not an issue. I'm ready. Right, point three. Yes. I love it when I could see the bullet. How'd that shake? It'd be a 15 inch group. Dial up point four for me. 19.8. 19.8. Okay, getting less wind up at altitude. Most of it's on the ground. So tell me when you're ready. I am ready. Right edge. Just off the right edge. So we'll make the adjustment. We don't care what's going on. Tell me when you're ready. I am ready. Favor left. Favor left. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Guess what? Yeah. We may have found that point in the world where that thing's gonna start dropping off. We just hit 1.2 low. And the last one we were hit dead on. Okay. Oh. Let's try it again. Yep. Top left hand corner of the target. Got it. Watch your reticle. Yeah. You're right. We have reached yep. that point. So at this point here, we've now gone down uh, below the, the speed of sound. All right, and crossing back through the sound barrier, the bullet ends up having issues and we'll start tumbling, spinning, and, and yawing, and everything else. So we have definitely reached that point. We didn't reach it out at 1313, but now at 1470, we're there. Well, my world-class spotter slash ballistician, Walt, has figured it out. This gun is basically good to go out to 1313 on steel, but now we just tried just shy of 1500, and it's a no-go. The group size down there is the size of probably a Volkswagen. It's getting big, yeah. Yeah, and so what we're gonna do now, we're gonna back it back down to the zone where we know we can get good hits. We're gonna put the suppressor on it that mile high shooting and accessory supplied with the gun. And we're gonna see what kind of hits we get with the same dope, same data we had unsuppressed. Sounds like a plan. Larry, you ready? I am ready. Wind has shifted. Yeah, it has, I can tell. Left edge. Clang. Wow. I'm going to say that it hit. In the upper left quadrant? Yep, right in there. That, that, was, that was impressive, you know, to go add that suppressor and then have no oh, yeah, real I'm impressed. point of impact shift at that at range. At 1300? Yeah. I'm very impressed. Yep. You're gonna try go back out to 147. Right. Okay. Here we go. Dial 19.8. All right. Larry, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. 
Give me left edge. One. It hit center low. So with that in mind, Larry, yep. come up point three. Okay. And let's see what happens. Point three would give us 20.1, 20 correct? 20.1. 20.1, and that's the suppressed one. Tell me when you're ready. I'm ready. All right, focus on the reticle. I can't stress that enough. Left edge. I'll be I'm gonna say that hit center, low, at laid waist. The suppressor's giving it more velocity, mm -hmm. and we're getting there. That's well, good. the guy I got, Randy Pennington, the guy that sent it to me from Mile High, said that most people, once they start shooting these suppressed, they shoot them suppressed all the time. I am genuinely impressed with that hit with the exact same dope at 1313 with the suppressor on. Basically, it hit a man at 1300 meters with exactly the same dope suppressor on and suppressor off. That's very impressive. Okay, now we shot the gun 1470 with the suppressor and we got hits on a target that we previously did not get any hits on unsuppressed. Now we're gonna see where it falls off the edge of the cliff, so to speak, and push it another 100 yards or so to just shy of 1600 yards. Okay, 1583. All right, I want you to dial 21.7. 21.7, it works out to about a mil and a half for that next 100 yards. Got it. We're getting out there now. Focus on the reticle, tell me when you're ready. I'm ready. Left, point three. Ooh. About where the crosshair was at. Just out there. Okay, tell me when you're ready. I am ready. Favor left. Uh, Unobserved. Yeah. Outer space. That's not really good because that was 0.7 lower yeah. than where we hit before. Larry, give me another one. Okay. We'll make an adjustment off that. Tell me when you're ready. Ready. And we have the upper left hand corner of the target. That's it. Not only is it hard to spot out at that range, but yeah, we just had a, a half mil shift between those two. So, yeah, so. We were able to hold it together at 14 something, but. So that is definitely, that is the threshold of everything. The suppressor gave us that extra 100. 100 yards. Yeah, and when we added 100, we, we lost Makes it. sense. Okay, I'm about ready to hook back up with my buddy Walt. We're gonna go through the scrambler, which yours truly held the record on for a number of years. You're definitely not gonna wanna miss it. red dot sights, there's aim point, and then there's everything else. All right, we're here with Walt Wilkinson, my good friend at Gunsight. We're about ready to take you through the world famous Scrambler. Now this is actually the newer Scrambler. Tree fell down or whatever happened, you had to change it up. You seem to remember who had the record on that one, did you? I've been reminded a few times, Larry, that you, in fact, held the record on the old Scrambler, the first Scrambler, for many years. Yes, I did. Well, I'm interested to see this one. Take us through it, brother. All right. This is our first position on the tree, aimed in on the first target. You have two tries, all right? After two shots, 
I'll give the command of move, and you move to the next station. All right, good All right. deal. Position two, you can assume any intermediate position you want to here. You can go sitting, squat, kneeling, and your target is straight down there. This is the, the furthest target we have at 105. Okay. Position number three, you're right here on top of the stump, using it as a rest any way that you want to. And this is the first pepper popper that you get right down through this lane okay. here. Doghouse. The infamous doghouse, roger that. Okay, you've got to get inside of the house here. Watch your head getting in. All right. Next position, squat. It's a pepper popper. If you try and go prone, you're gonna get a surprise. Yeah. You cannot see the target. Yeah. All right, here on the log, use it to rest any way that you want to. Pepper popper, straight down about 60. Okay. All right. Last position, this is set up for a lefty, dude. All right, you can rest against here, use the rock with your foot, anything you want to. Pepper popper down there. All right, let's tear it up. Let's do it. All right, the weapon I want to use for Gunsight's famous scrambler is the SIG 553. And in this case, the 553 pistol converted to a semi automatic short barreled rifle. M&M is bringing them in exclusively for Armadi USA to distribute. Now, they're not cheap. The way you need to look at it, this is your last chance to get a genuine, completely Swiss-made 550 series, and it's also the first time a 553 formatted weapon has ever been imported in any way. Now, it comes in at a pistol, like this, and I took mine through my good buddy, another SIG collector, David Hume. We put a butt stock on it, had the barrel threaded, now I have a genuine short-barreled rifle, 553 SIG. A couple little differences here. The earlier SIGs had a sheet metal steel lower, these are now forged aluminum lowers, machined and hard coat anodized. In addition, semi-automatic only, which is fine. And one of the big changes they did with the 553 over the earlier 552, the 552 had an AK style operating system with the recoil spring coming in from the rear. They had some issues with those braking. They redesigned it to a plastic follower. They now adapted the earlier 551 series recoil spring system and moved it back up front. This allows them to use the standard bolt carrier, standard charging handle. Overall, real slick gun. I've been looking forward to this thing for a long, long time. It has all the classic SIG features, cold hammer forged barrel, one in 10 twist, nitrided barrel, really cool gun. These particular ones are coming with a Picatinny rail. They're also gonna be available with diopter sights. Now here's the scary part. They're not cheap, right around four grand a copy, but you need to look at these kind of like the Rolex of small arms. And just like the Swiss made Rolex, these things are top of the line. If you want one, don't wait. Armadi-USA.com is the place to get one. All right, Walt. Time for me to run through the scrambler, bro. All right, soon to position. You'll begin on the timer. Shooter ready. Yep. Hit. Watch your head. Hit! 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 Shooter, unload and clear. 49.15, utterly outstanding time. 12 seconds off my old record on the old scrambler. That's, that's an excellent time. Overall, not bad. It's very hard to judge the distance. Well, one, you're yes. using full silhouettes for some of them, and some of them using poppers. That in and of itself. Also, the camouflage, and the mere fact it's down a lane makes it hard to judge distance. Now, what's the far of the shot in this? Uh, we have lased most of the targets and they are between uh, 85 and 125. If you go too low, you, you can't see the target or you lose it and you, you can't get on it to get the hit. Well, what, what else was interesting too is I could hear the hits on all of them except for like the second one. That was the only one I couldn't hear the hits on. These are one inch power poppers. Some of them don't sing. You just kind of have to watch for the splash. Got it. So, yes. Now, another question I would think, you know, I'm big aim point fan as you know and a big fan of the micro the red dots kind of rule this they do a lot of times because of the background sometimes the iron sights 
yeah, as you said about the targets, they Wash. really blend in very well, mm -hmm. and it's kind of hard to pick up these camouflage targets with iron sights. Okay. We find guys that use magnified optics end up searching for the targets mm -hmm. a lot, so your best times come from guys who have the red dots. Red dot. Now, yes. do this with shotgun, obviously, carbine. Never do it with pistol. Pistol, 499, yes. Oh, run okay. through this with the advanced pistol. Good deal. Great course of fire. Yeah, we like it a lot. Gun sight's world famous for pistol, carbine, shotgun, a variety of shooting discipline skill sets. One thing that doesn't immediately come to mind is long range shooting. I got my buddy Walt here at Gun sight. He's gonna take us through not only the ranges, but the classes Gun sight offers. Uh, we have three distinct uh, long range ranges here for precision rifle. Our first one, the closest one, uh, is called Sniper Ridge. We have five different firing stations there with five targets on each. So as the students rotate through each one of the positions, they're presented with, with different lanes, uh, targets in different locations, hidden in the junipers, down in the washes, and they have to locate those targets, range them themselves with mill dot, and then engage them. Our next range that we had that we move out to is Long Range Ridge. Now we're gonna make the targets a little smaller. We're gonna increase the ranges by about 200 yards. And once again, we have five firing stations and the students rotate through those. And each station has about five targets on each one. All right, so once the students have, have mastered one of those classes and, and attended then, if they choose to come back to the extreme long range class, the XLR, now we're talking about caliber-wise, Larry. The 338 is basically about the minimum, and then the students can come up with up to 50 caliber. Now the ranges, we're gonna start out at the maximum range that we shoot with the long range rifle and PR7, which is 1,000. We're gonna start right at that and work out to 2,000 meters. The focus in the XLR class is learning how to run the ballistic computer. That's the number one thing there, because past a thousand, you can just shoot until you get a hit and, and then say, okay, well, I hit at this range. But first or second round hit, you, you've got to have a ballistic computer to consistently achieve that level of performance. Excellent. Now, do you teach any of those classes, I'm gathering? Yes, I do. I teach uh, long range rifle and I will uh, coach PR7 and I coach uh, the XLR class. Good deal. Thanks, Walt. We're having a great time. Okay, Walt and I are fixing to shoot some bigger targets downrange, more in the realm of anti-material, which is kind of where the 50 BMG comes into effect. To me, anti-material means hitting a target, a vehicle, whatever the case may be, with as big a bullet as possible and doing as much damage as possible. The 50 BMG is kind of the classic small arms cartridge in the U.S. arsenal for that exact purpose. Because you have the, the availability of the Ralphless Rounds, uh, API, APIT, something that will really do some damage to the target. Where do you see that come into effect even for something for 338? Meaning the conditions are such that you're not going to really have a chance of hitting a person, but you might be able to hit a group of people or a vehicle. Where does that come into effect? I guess that's the, the performance of your bullet, your terminal uh, ballistics. What will the bullet do at range? If you're using you know, a hollow point and you're trying to penetrate into a hard target, more than likely you're not gonna be able to do it. But if you're using a solid or some type of armor piercing round for the 338, you'll be able to get into that hard target and do some damage. Well, it would not be TAC TV if we didn't have a little Southern Thunder. Now season one, we were not able to have any big booms we came out to Arizona, but we're correcting that out here at Gunsight. Walt and I are gonna have some fun with some big targets downrange. You're guaranteed to enjoy it. All righty. Tell me when you're ready. Ready. Favor left. I up. 
You did fine. It went right through it. Did it? Yep. It went a little high. So what we're going to do? Yeah. Dial down 0.5. Give me 0.5 down. Okay. All right. You should be reading. 11 straight 11 up. 11 even. Roger. Shooter ready? I'm ready. Favor left. That is cool. That did it. Good shot, Larry. You put it right in there. That was nice. Uh, it was great because I saw the explosion long before I out through the kit. That was. Uh, that was good. That was good. God, that's fun. You can't do that enough. I mean, honestly. All right, one down, two to go. Next up is Walt on his 50 BMG. He's going to take out the thousand-yard target. Coming up next. I want to talk you through the gun that I'm shooting today. This is a Steyr HS50. It's a 50 BMG. The HS50 is capable of one MOA accuracy. I have been able to get 0.2 MOA groups out at, at 200 meters and have shot in competition six inch groups at 1,000. So it will perform well above the advertised level of accuracy. The scope I have mounted on it is a Night Force 5.5 to 22 by 56. I have mill radian turrets and I have the MLR reticle. I like that combination because this way anything that I see and measure inside the field of view with the reticle, I can dial that directly onto the scope and move it exactly that far. The muzzle brake is an extremely effective one. It makes this lightweight gun very manageable to handle. The bipod is very robust, probably the easiest of any bipod that I have worked, period. All right, Walt, before we get going here, me spotting you, why don't you give me some pointers here? Okay, the spotter truly in the team needs to be the best shooter of the two, okay? The shooter is the monkey. All he's got to do is exactly what the spotter tells him to, apply marksmanship skills and do his job press the trigger and keep the gun full. As far as this goes, what I like to do when I make a wind call is I like to position the reticle on the target exactly the same as the call that I'm giving the shooter. Whatever you see on the reticle, you just call that. So if you see the bullet hit at 1.1 to the right, and 0.5 low, all you say then is left 1.1 and up 0.5. Got it, you call it the way you see it. All you do is read it. This way, if you, if you can achieve that, there's no math. Because it, but if you're holding center, then you've got, okay, it's over two and then this, and I called 0.5, so I gotta subtract and add, and it's like too much, and your second shot is not going to be as quick as it could be, mm -hmm. all right? So that is a trick to speed up that second shot because your target's not going to stand still for you. Right. Okay? Yeah, you got it. All right, shooter ready. 0.5 left. Well done, Walt. Yeah. Good win call, Larry. Thank you very much. Good shooting, Walt. One shot, one kill. Next is 900 yards, just shy of 50 pounds Southern Thunder, and Walt and I are going to take it together on command. Don't want to miss it. Snipers, respond in order, ready. Walt, ready. Larry, ready. Snipers, ready. Wind, left point five. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Holy <laughs> That was cool. That was good. They were real close at the same time. Oh yeah. Very, very close. Good work team, well done. I did well. Well done. Good no, job. Nothing like first round hits. I've been out to the gun site several times now. I attended my first gun site class years ago. 
and for whatever reason I was completely oblivious to the long range classes they have out here and the ranges available until in fact we pursued gun sight for shooting long range with Walt this year for season two attack TV. From what I've seen, superb range, I would agree with him. I've never seen any better. Not that I've seen that many, but this is as good as I've seen to date for sure. So when you're thinking long range, remember, keep gun sight in mind.